out. Litzow takes on a tough, well-experienced Pancho Martinez. There's Jason Litzow. He goes by the nickname the American Boy. He would be justified going by the moniker the KO Kid. That's all he's done. 13 knockouts, 13 fights. What should we expect from Jay tonight? I'm going to give it to you guys for sure. We put the right guy in the card. I'm going to give an awesome performance, you know, unless I knock him out early. But if, if not, he's going to get up. He's going to get a boxing lesson, a punching lesson, everything. Blitz out Martinez scheduled for eight rounds. Now for the official introductions, let's head up to the ring to Jake Gutierrez. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Caesars Palace, right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. We're in tonight, main events in association with Caesars Palace and Budweiser, the undisputed king of bears, are proud to present ESPN Friday Night Fights main event. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Skip Avancino, Jr. And now, fans, we head right into the action with a special eight-round featherweight bout. The three judges scoring this fight will be Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, and Dave Moretti. And your referee in charge of the action is Toby Gibson. Introducing first, he fights out of the red corner. He weighed in at 126 pounds. He's wearing the black trunks with beige trim. His professional record stands at 13 victories with only four defeats. 10 wins by knockout from Laredo, Texas. Here is Edel Alfonso. Poncho Martinez! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 127 pounds. He's wearing the colors of America, the red, white, and blue. He has a perfect professional record. 13 victories, no defeats. All 13 wins by knockout. From St. Paul, Minnesota, introducing Jason, the American boy. <laughs> Referee is Toby Gibson for this scheduled eight round. All right, gentlemen, I've given you your instructions prior to this fight in your respective dressing rooms. Considering this a legal punch on both boxers, any questions from the red corner? Any questions from the blue corner? Give me a clean fight. I obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. If you look at the numbers, Pancho Martinez has the slight edge in terms of ring experience, but what he really has the edge is the level of competition he's faced. Let's out. He's been in against the norm for this stage of one's career. Pancho has gone against Olympian Clarence Vincent, Daniel Ponce de Leon, and he just beat a solid San Antonio prospect, Eric Rodriguez, who we have seen before. Jason Litzow, 13 fights, 13 knockouts, but Teddy, this is a slight step up. Yes, it is. As you just said, Martinez has fought the much better opposition. He's gone the 10-round distance twice. Litzow never passed six rounds. But Litzow, tall and skinny, has power. He does indeed. We've seen it a few times. He's a very fun fighter to watch. Fan-friendly, TV-friendly fighter. Lives in Minnesota. That's where he was born and raised. Trains in New Jersey. Like most guys that are wiry, they get good leverage in their punches. Jason is one of those guys. You look in the past history of boxing, Carlos Zarate, the great bantamweight champion. Alexis Oguello, the great junior lightweight, lightweight champion. All thin, wiry guys generate great power. Right now, looks out doing it, using his height, staying at the right range, keeping the short on Martinez off. Martinez comes in behind a left hand. Moments ago, it was Litzow's right that stunned him. And now Martinez keeps coming forward, trying to apply pressure against the unbeaten Litzow. The short Martinez wants to get close. Litzow has a choice of doing two things. One, keep Martinez on the outside and catch him. At the end of his jab, the other is catch Martinez walking in with counters. Landed a right hand, but then Martinez came back with a left. Stinging jab now from Litzow. Martinez tries to charge into the corner, sinks a body shot. When you watch a young prospect like Litzow coming up the boxing ladder, 13-0, 13 knockouts, 
one of the things that you ask yourself if you've been around the sport is how good is he defensively that will tell how long he stays around and how well he does and how much he really develops in all dimensions one of the things that you notice right away with Litzau that could be a kink in that armor is that he pulls back with his left hand down. And when you pull away from punches, you're dependent on perfect reflexes like that, perfect timing. And when you're not perfect, and more experienced opponents show time you and punch behind you, especially when you have that hand down, you can suddenly find yourself in a position that you don't want to be in, hurt, and maybe even on the floor. Right now, Litzau has been able to get away with it. You can see Litzau controlling the pace right now and the theme of this fight. Staying on the outside, picking the spots, getting out when he wants to, even with the hand down, even pulling back, getting away with it, anticipating so far. So good. Looks like this is going to be a very entertaining fight. Martinez charging hard to close out this first round against Jason Litzow. What a spectacular scene here at Caesars Palace. Joe Tessitore, Teddy Atlas with you. Friday, Ahunia against Dominic Gwynn in our main event tonight. Hell Dominic Gwynn, Teddy, I mean, this is like Groundhog Day. It just keeps repeating and repeating. He's looking for a bounce back win. But wasn't this the same exact storyline but for Sergei Lyakovich? What has changed? Well, we're going to find out. One thing that's changed, he's nine pounds lighter than his last fight. So that's that good. shows me right there that he understands what you understand, that there's a need for change, a need to do something. He worked harder. He knows the importance of this fight. And if there was ever a time that the saying comes true that it's not enough just to win, but you got to look good, well, against that guy, Friday Onyanyi, he has to, and I'm sorry for that pronunciation, but he let's has go, to be go. able to beat this guy in what I think is an impressive way tonight if he wants to, again, take his place on, as one of the ring. top prospects. And at one point, he was the heir to the throne, supposedly in the heavyweight division. Ahunaya uh, and Dominic Gwynn coming up in our main event. Ten-round heavyweight main event on this pay-per-view eve from Las Vegas. Of course, tomorrow, the heavyweights of choice, Calvin Brock and Jamil Big Time McCline on ESPN pay-per-view. Round number two between Martinez and Litzau. In round one, Jason Litzau, the undefeated fighter in the red, white, and blue, landed 20 of 27 power shots. That was good for 47%. You see, overall, he was 32 of 70, according to CompuBox, good for 46%. An exchange there. It's going to open with Martinez landing that left hand. Litzau returned fire. Martinez still coming forward. So far, Martinez showing all the heart in the world, but also very predictable. Coming forward, square leg, slowly, in a very predictable, plotting manner, where Litzau has been able to take advantage. You can see Martinez always square, squares up with his feet too much, gives you too much per punching service, and Litzau taking advantage of that fact. Right hand by Litzau. Martinez still coming forward nonetheless, but taking blows in trying to gain that real estate. Tough spot for Martinez. Been inactive. This is his first fight this year, two fights in 2004, and one fight in 2003. Says Litzau hasn't fought anyone, that is going to change. Right now, most of the advantages to Litzau, the size, staying on the outside, using that size, using that range, quicker hands, and more flexibility. He can fight inside and he can do this, which has been very prosperous for him against the slow-footed Martinez. He can move, he can box. And you have one guy who can fight inside and outside and give angles, and the other guy, namely Martinez, can only move forward in a square fashion, in a plotting fashion. Usually the other guy, in this case, the man with the red, white, and blue striped trunks, will have a big edge. Jason Litzow drawing the cheers from the crowd with every punch he's been throwing here in this second round. Stinging right, left hook. Martinez wide with a left again. There's an uppercut by the American boy. And he raises his hand to the crowd. And that's the ability 
on two parts. One on your ability to be able to be more versatile, more mobile, which Litzau is. The other is when you have cooperation, as he does for Martinez, standing square and slow right in front. Martinez coming the same way all the time. Very game, but very easy to hit. What a strong second round for the unbeaten Jason Litzau here on Friday Night Fights. Days ends. Our promise is as sure as the sun. A sunny, warm welcome. A fresh, satisfying start. A shiny, sparkling moment. More rewards to brighten your day. At Days Ends, it's not just about the change we put in your pocket. It's about the change we make in your journey. Why don't you keep on the sunny side of life? I would have problems with heartburn lots of times, like when I go out to dinner. Millions of frequent heartburn sufferers like Jackie are taking heart thanks to the amazing relief of Prilosec OTC. I take the one pill in the morning, and the rest of the day I don't have to worry about heartburn. Prilosec OTC is the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. That's because it directly shuts down lots of acid-producing pumps in your stomach. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. It's great with the Prilosec OTC. I love it. The last round punctuated with a big uppercut from the right side by Litzau. Martinez standing right there to receive it. Pancho Martinez in the black with beige. Jason Litzau, he goes by the nickname the American Boy, of course wearing red, white, and blue, and off to a fast start here at Caesars Palace. Punches in round number two. You see Martinez just 21% of his total punches thrown landed. Litzau, meanwhile, 34 of 91, and 31 of those 34 were power shots. Litzau uses the whole ring. Martinez only lanes, straight ahead lanes. It's a young man in Jason Litzau, 21 years old. He openly talks about a very troubled and difficult upbringing in the Twin Cities. Bounced around from family members, looking for some stability, a veteran of many street fights and a little trouble up there with his younger brother. But boxing led to a better life. He's focused and determined, and he's 13-0 with 13 knockouts and a prospect that excites a lot of people. Another young man saved by boxing. It's a wonderful point, Teddy. We've seen it time and time again. Right there, you could see Litzau. Something that his team is going to have to be concerned about or at least address as they continue to step up this boxing ladder in his career. He pulls straight back from in close with his hands down. Dependent on his reflexes, his sense of anticipation. Sometimes if you sense anticipation and judgment is a little off, you pull back. Experienced fighters will take advantage of that. They will nail you punches pulling back. They will punch with you and behind you. Tonight so far, Litzau has been able to get away with it. Good combination that time. He started off with a left hook. Litzau has shown the ability to fight inside when he has to, as well as what his forte is on the outside with that long, long reach. Right now, Litzau just looking to set up Martinez. Catch him coming. Fires off that left hand. Litzau feeling very comfortable in there with a man right in front of him who's doing more catching than pitching. Pancho is being punchoed. Martinez absorbing a lot here in round number three. Another left hand comes in and a right after that uppercut. So many advantages for Litzau. Much bigger man turned pro, 131 pounds. Entire career at junior lightweight. Still growing at 21 years old. Comes in three pounds lighter than his last fight at 127 tonight. Knew the importance of this fight. And Martinez, much smaller. Turned pro at 113 pounds. He's got a tough task in front of him. Put another one in the column for Jason Litzow. Tonight on Sports Center, from San Diego to South Beach, your NFL draft coverage begins. Plus, what's keeping Dale Jr. from winning this season and why Roy will have to rebuild UNC again. Sports Center, 11 Eastern. It's an NBA play.
playoffs triple header. Coverage begins Saturday at 5.30 on ESPN. Oh, I need a bigger contract. I need special shoes and gloves. I played without eyes, people. But I made it work. Preview the next generation of Madden NFL. First hour of the NFL draft. Let's see how the new right guard extreme power stripe works now that it's 25% stronger. Let's say these guys are the power stripe. Red Rover, Red Rover, we call Dio over! And this guy's Odor. You do not want to be Odor. Get more extreme, get right guard! Blitz are way ahead on my scorecards, and this is one of the reasons why. Nothing complicated. Moving his hands, Martinez right there to catch them. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas, Jeremy Schapp, our ringside reporter, watching Jason Litzow and Pancho Martinez. You saw Teddy Atlas, the scorecard, 30-27. to 27. Real strong start for Litzow. Teddy, he's really conscious of the fact that this is a huge boxing weekend. He's opening it up at Caesars Palace, the first TV fight of what will be two spectacular nights of boxing, and he wants to take advantage of that spotlight. Well, he, only, he fought four and a half months ago, as I said before the last round. Comes in three pounds lighter than that fight, so yes, Joe, he understands the importance to his career of this fight, as he should. And as I was saying the last round, he has a lot of advantages and size in more ways than just height and reach. He's been a bigger guy. As I said, he's been a junior lightweight his whole career. Martinez turned pro 113 pounds, moved up to bantamweight, then just in his last three fights up to featherweight. He's got a tough task facing a big, strong junior lightweight with 180 amateur fights under his belt. Jason Litzow. Right hand scores well for Litzow. Martinez has been taken a lot through three and a half rounds. Martinez comes with a left of his own. He just keeps coming and coming. He says, you know the fighting roosters? That's his nickname, the Black Rooster, and that's how he fights. In fact, his grandfather is a songwriter and performer, live performer, and he had actually wrote a ballad in honor of Pancho Martinez's grandson. It's called, They Call Him the Black Rooster. Well, someone should tell the Black Rooster to move his head. They really should. Because this business is not about just being tough. Grandpa can write a new song. Exactly. This is about being tough and being smart, because when you get to a certain level that Litzow is trying to get to, they're all tough. But a lot of headshots now, Teddy. A lot of work upstairs targeting that noggin. Martinez gets insulted if you miss him. Litzow, 23 out of 36 in power shots in the first two minutes of this fourth round alone. Litzow would be well served and his corner would probably be well served he's got a corner of bob van sickle john johnson his amateur trainer also his brother alan litzel who's also a professional fighter i think they would serve their man well by telling him he's proven to you he's got a good chin you win him son very easily start going downstairs to the body see if you can take something out of him by going downstairs where maybe he doesn't take it quite as well as he takes it upstairs. Let's now opening up our Friday night fights. Of course, still to come tonight, heavyweights in the main event. Friday, Ahu Naye will be taking on Dominic Gwynn. And Dominic is with our Jeremy Shep. Jeremy. Well, as it was mentioned earlier, Dominic Gwynn won <clears throat> a great hope in the heavyweight division, lost two out of his last three fights. Dominic, how much exactly is at stake for you and your career tonight? Uh, everything is at stake for me tonight. Um, I got a lot on the line. Um, I feel like um, my, my back is back to the wall. So, I mean, I have to do everything that I prepared myself to do and come out and look like the champ that I am. A disappointing performance in Atlantic City in December against Sergei Lyakovich. Your corner imploring you to throw more punches. How will your approach be different tonight? Uh, I'm going to let my hands go, um, do the things that we worked on in training camp, and uh, the fight should be, uh, should be a blast. Dominic, thanks very much. Good luck against Friday. Ahu Naya back down to Joe and Teddy at ringside. Thank you, Jeremy. Looking forward to that. Heavyweights in our main event. Friday night fights from the beautiful setting at Caesars Palace right on the Vegas Strip. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, Brian Kenny, our host, and Jeremy Schapp. Pancho Martinez in the black with beige taking on the undefeated 13 and 0 with 13 knockouts Jason Litzow round number five they're scheduled for eight Litzow getting right back to work Teddy all he has to do is move his hands because he knows where his opponent's going to be 
right in front, coming forward slowly. There's three problems with Martinez's approach. None of them has anything to do with heart. He's got plenty and plenty of that. The three problems is he doesn't move his head. He comes straight in. Come on, punch and get out. Right hand from Litz out. Seen plenty of that tonight. Combination now finishes with a left. Tests the left uppercut before going back to the right. And yet Martinez open, still coming forward. Absorbs a left hand. Teddy, the question now becomes, Daniel Ponce de Leon has knocked out Pancho Martinez. That happened the once, and there the it round. is. The, the question was answered quickly by Toby Gibson. You know, I was saying that he's got three problems, Martinez. He comes straight in, he doesn't move his head, and he squares up. Gets those feet very parallel, gives you a lot of punching service, and lits out for the last four rounds. And this being the early in the fifth, took advantage of that, and the referee did what he feels is the compassionate thing to do. He didn't see Martinez in this fight, and he saw him accumulating more and more and more punishment. He didn't want to see another five rounds of that kind of punishment when he felt that the, there was no question who was going to win this fight from what he had seen. Jason Litzel. You know, he has an overwhelmingly dynamic personality. He struts around with lots of confidence, and he's just as exciting in the ring. Let's take a look, Teddy, at the finishing flurry. Nothing new. Martinez walking in, squaring up, not moving his head enough. At a very slow, predictable pace. And Litzel doing what he had done four earlier rounds and prior rounds. Getting his hands off in front, stepping back with counters, mixing it up in all different offensive ways, and not missing much. For the official particulars, let's send it to the ring to Jake Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Toby Gibson stops this bout at 54 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO victory and still undefeated, Jason, the American boy, Litzow. Jason Litzow, 14 opponents have stood opposite him. 14 opponents have been knocked out. The American boy, he told us yesterday he realizes the importance of this. The spotlight fight opening up these two days of boxing from Caesars Palace. 14 and 0 with 14 knockouts. And now he's standing by with our Jeremy Sheff. Jeremy. Joe, thanks very much. A dominating performance for Jason Litzow. 14 and 0, 14 knockouts. What was the key tonight, okay. Jason? Well, everybody's telling me he's okay. tough. And so I was going to go out and box him and turn it up. Six, seven, eight, I was going to give everything I had backing him up. Yeah, it was a And I, I think it was a good six. stoppage because I was hitting him with some nice shots. And uh, I was going to turn it up another notch coming next round. And I was gonna, you guys going to see that. But I was, I was, I knew he was tough. I knew he could take a shot. But I want to take him out in later rounds. I didn't want to go try to throw myself out, trying to knock him out in the early rounds and have none at the end. But I was in good shape, but I just wanted to be able to punch hard at towards the six, seven, eight, and be some fast. What was the most impressive part of your arsenal in your opinion tonight? Well, I think I, I'm, a, I'm a good boxer, and, and uh, I guess I think I can hit hard. So if I set him up and him with some nice shots, then I think I took kind of his heart early in the first round, moving and hitting him with nice shots. I think that took his heart from him to keep coming because he didn't know if I was going to hit him with an uppercut or a right hand or a left hook because I can, I can hit with both hands. That was apparent tonight, Jason. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Back thank, to you guys. Thank you. Very much, Jeremy Schapp. Jason Litzow was 134 of 234 power punches thrown. Good for 57%. Just tattooing Pancho Martinez. And he comes up with the fifth round knockout win. Litzow, 14-0 with 14 knockouts. Brian Kenny, yet another impressive performance by Litzow. Absolutely, Joe. And by the way, uh, up here right now, uh, it's unanimous. We all like that stoppage. I'm sitting here among uh, two of the all-time greats, Hall of Famer, Angelo Dundee. Brought one of his fighters along with him. He's got David Estrada in the pay-per-view tomorrow night, and he brought Sugar Ray Leonard with him. Guys, great to have you here. You guys, are, you, you, as soon as you sat up here, you started talking about the first time, the first pro fight that you had with Ray, right? Yeah, Angelo? we had a lot of fun. We fought a kid like a little short guy, uh, and the, uh, Rocky Ramon. 
so he was so short, I put a sombrero on him. I told him, please stand on the scale. Boy, he was short. And, and when, when Ray Leonard comes into Caesar's Palace, of course, he's had he won his first world title here. He's had so many great fights here that they, they roll out the red carpet. And when, they, when Ray comes in, now this was earlier this afternoon. Ray, what is it like? I mean, is it, I mean, you, you fought all over the world, but what is it like to come back here to Caesar's Palace? It's like my second home, Brian. The, the folks here, the fans, Caesar's Palace, it's like my second home. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. It was a great ride for me, and uh, I cherish these moments. It's, 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 it's amazing. I love it. Angelo, 1979, only three years after the Olympics, you put him in against uh, Wilfred Benitez. What went into that decision to go up against a guy who was top, top guy?